absolutely packed with standing room only. I'm not kidding you. God's given us talent, but most of all, He's given us a heart for Jesus. And you have to understand, <clears throat> excuse me, that we are living in that hour of time where people are lukewarm and cold. Before we get started, let's, um, let's uh, pray for this storm. You know, there's a lot of people whose lives are endangered as we speak today, both in Florida and uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Texas. And then as it goes on up, a lot of other people. And there are some people that are actually opening up portals and conjuring these storms up. That's hard for us to to believe. And some of these people claim to be Christians, but they're not. And uh, what they are is witches. And uh, so we need to pray that that storm weakens, that our God will take his hand and crush it, and the demons that are motivating it to put them into the pit of hell. And uh, there's two of them. we got to pray that Hannah doesn't join this Gustav. Now, the interesting thing about um, the name Gustav, it, they, they put it out that Gustav meant staff of God. But as we begin to look it up, and do some research on it, what it actually meant was staff of demons. And then what it meant was uh, the name itself over in Sweden, it means pours out semen. And so a friend of mine was talking with me, and uh, I had done a little research on something called blue flame witches. Because of the per- because of the fact that one of these women in this false move has a blue flame on her television program, and uh, she um, she I mean she she's really a, a witch. She's an occultist. But anyway, long story short, so doing research on her, I did further research on the blue flame witch. What the Blue Flame Witch does is it she enslaves men, whether they're married or not married. And what she does is um, she, um, she um, enslaves them sexually. And at, at a certain time, uh, she commands them uh, to ejaculate. Their semen. Then uh, they all do it at a certain time, which then through a ritualism, she takes the power of that. You know the Bible says, do not spill your seed on a rock. And so the devil always likes for us to um, do what God tells us not to do, you know. So through this ritualism, she gains her power. There could be thousands and thousands of blue flame witches in the world today. With some of the movies that they put out, the young girls are getting involved in things that they shouldn't. And so I want you to join me in prayer today. We're going to bind the power of the blue flame witches concerning these storms. The one coming after it, its name is Hannah, which means God is gracious. So we're going to believe God to be gracious concerning that son, our God, concerning that that thing, because it's uh, it's pointed to hit. It's pointed to hit Florida. Also, some of these people that are calling out these. Um, these uh, storms, conjuring them up is what a witch would call it, or a wizard, uh, they have something called ley lines, and they move on those ley lines. 
Witches do. Now, a ley line is like a pathway. And uh, uh, over, over the pathway, they have opened up wormholes or stargates, which is a hole to the other dimension. We live in this dimension, but this is a spiritual dimension where the demons are. The demons come down through that hole, and when they come through the hole, uh, they do their uh, rob, kill, and destroy. And so uh, as we pray, I'm going to pray that the ley lines, that God will break up the ley lines and the patterns of that storm, or all of these storms. I think there's two more after them. And that uh, the portals will be closed and the assignments destroyed. And the assignments are so that life will be lost. Big life. That storm has already taken 72 lives down in the islands. And, and um, Brother Modus is from the islands, and I know that he's desperately been praying for his relatives down there, and we need to pray for his relatives. Anybody else from the islands? No? Okay. Uh, so uh, whenever things like this happen and your life is not threatened, think of your brothers and sisters in the pathways of those destructive form, uh, storms. They, your life will be infected because everything will go up at the grocery store. Your gas will go up. All of these things happen when these uh, things go on. So it's worthwhile for us to pray too. Amen? Now, this storm is headed to New Orleans. And my friend, uh, Pastor Annette, and her husband went to New Orleans after Katrina. Are you, are you taping? I'm going to invite her up to give a little testimony of what she saw after the storm. Uh, Pastor Annette, because you know people, Christians are saying things, stupid things, like, oh, Katrina meant purity. So God was just purifying the land. And like they gave a prophecy when they, uh, uh, Matthew uh, Stevens, and Stephen Benning, who has attacked my life and said they want to kill me. And so it's all over the Internet as I speak to you. But uh, they came to Jacksonville. They struck the four corners of this church with their little stupid magical staffs. And then they went down to Atlantic Beach and they, and they struck the Atlantic Beach for Sasami to come up and wash over from the East Coast. And then they went over to the West Coast to the Gulf of Mexico and struck it. So another one would come up. And their theory was that Florida will forever be buried underwater. So we have to pray. This is our territory here. And, and, one of the crazy prophets in that uh, conference that they had here locally, he said, I saw a vision. And he said, in that vision, he said, I saw the bride of Christ laying dead at the cross. And uh, he said, this great big wave came out of the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, he said, uh, it washed over the state and it purified the state so you see these demonic people what we call a disaster they call God's judgment and what we call uh, a sad thing for people's life they jump in glee that people have been killed because they say that people have not have not obeyed God so God's judgments come to kill, rob, and steal. My Bible tells me 
that our God comes to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. And my Bible also tells me that it's God's desire that none perish. And it also says that Jesus was sent that none would perish and that whosoever shall believe on him shall have eternal life. Whosoever shall not believe on him shall perish. Well, these kooky prophets of doom, uh, crazy prophets, uh, when you look into their eyes, you just see pure murder devils. Uh, these crazy prophets think that God has sent them to pronounce his judgments on America. And they are pronouncing judgments such as uh, storms, fires, wind, uh, all uh, tornadoes, uh, total destruction of America. And what the weather doesn't get, they're calling forth nukes. So uh, whenever words are spoken, words are very, very powerful. I've taught you that. And when a person stands and speaks a word out, if it's under the inspiration of God, the angels at the throne of God comes and picks those words up and takes them to enforce them or to bring them to pass. That's why when you pray... Angels are coming to pick those prayers up that you pray, little you, and they take them right before the throne of God. And the Bible says that your prayers are sweet-smelling Savior to the, to the Lord in the book of Revelation. Now, whenever the devil's people pronounce curses and hexes and spells and magical words... What happens is the demons come and pick those words up and they proceed to try to enforce those words to come to pass. This is why we as Christians, we must pray about what we see. We have to pray about this church. We have to pray about Brother Modus and Sister Modus' church here. They pray for us, we pray for them. But you see, both of these churches should be stacked full at all times because we live right in the center of Cracktown. And the devils are so powerful over this area that the people can't get in the door. And so we need to do more, is what I'm telling you. God has put us here to deliver the brokenhearted, to heal the sick, to cast out devils, and to build people up in their faith so they can stand. They can't stand if they can't get to the church. And so we need to sincerely intercede about this church and understand that God put us here for a reason. He pays the rent on this church to take care of your spirit and to love you, and to give you good pastors to minister to you. But at the same time, he put this ministry here so that people that are really brokenhearted can come and find help. And there's not many places anymore for them to find help. I mean, some of these churches, I know a woman that recently left a church got in a lot of trouble uh, after she left the church. And uh, she came and she had told us certain things about the Lakeland Revival, which was a fake revival. And that uh, woman told me that the uh, people in that other church called her and said, you're cursed, and you are cursed forever because you spoke against God's anointed. And that woman almost lost her soul over those words. But bless God, God got a hold of her and she's doing fine. But the point is, is I'm just saying that to show you the power of words. Words are very powerful 
And the Lord told us in the Bible that we are going to be accountable for every single word we speak. That's why you got to put a guard on your mouth. It's not wrong to speak of a fake revival. But it's wrong for someone that claims to be a Christian pastor or leader to tell somebody that they are cursed and they're cursed for life because they just happen to speak to somebody and say that's a fake revival. They're going to be accountable for that. That's what you call religious devils. It's not of God. But uh, getting back, I got a letter, and I'm going to let you come up right now. I got a letter on my um, on my web, and it was from a woman that was an atheist. And what she, how she got in touch with me, she was doing research for a paper on Satanism. And when she Googled, my name came up because I've written a book, Solitary Satanists. So she came over and she investigated my web page and she's on my email list. So when I wrote, a, uh, wrote the articles, I've written two new articles up on my web page concerning uh, these uh, false prophets that are calling down these storms. And uh, I mentioned in my email letter how they claim that the name purity means Katrina and that God just sent purity, the storm purity, that God sent it to cleanse the land. Now, you see it's confusion when someone thinks that God has to send witchcraft rain, witchcraft hurricanes, and things like that to purify the land. My Bible tells me God sent Jesus to purify the land. God sent his blood to cleanse the land. And the bride of Christ is not dead. The bride of Christ is alive. And the bride of Christ is sitting in this church today. And we defy those demonic words that these people are speaking. And we bind those words up. And we bind this uh, semen of, uh, of uh, demons up that's attacking our states. And we bind those wicked words over all of these storms. If you look at the picture of this storm, I've never seen one that looked like it. This Gustav storm. It looks like a jack-o'-lantern. It's got two eyes on it, a nose and a big mouth. And storm, uh, hurricanes always have an eye that looks either like a bull pushing it or a fish. This is a demon face that covers that whole storm. They're saying that it's going to turn into a number four. And that if it does, many people will die and it will be uh, it, they say it's the hurricane of the, of the century. We need to pray about this. My brother's family's down there facing it, and they don't have governments that help them when they face these things. Their little houses just get blown away, and then they have to do the best they can until they can build another one. So I want you to uh, greet uh, Pastor Annette. And listen to what she says concerning the storm called Katrina Purity. Give her a hand. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. God put us in a unique position a couple of years ago. We were invited to minister. Can I? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. He asked us uh, down before Katrina, Katrina had hit Louisiana. Look at that. He's taking it right out of my speech. Thank God. 
Thank you, Jesus. And so we had the opportunity to minister in the ninth ward before Katrina had hit. And the same churches that we were ministering while we were down there, when the hurricane hit, were wiped out. All right. Uh, I won't be long. There's just a couple of points I want you to understand about this and about spiritual warfare. And I'm speaking to your spirit man now because I had the opportunity in the flesh which is far behind me to witness spiritual warfare. And uh, while I uh, was down there, we were invited back. We had returned. The hurricane had hit. And we, in our mind's eye, uh, can envision perhaps water coming in on the shore, the beach washing away, and some beautiful houses on the beach shore. Uh, washed away, and the way we envision things here in Florida. But we were invited back to the churches to welcome some of the survivors that had been in, sent out to Texas and pray for them and minister to them and welcome them back into New Orleans because their churches wanted them to come back home. And the powers to be in Texas began to say that they were refugees and they could no longer support them, that their own state should be doing something to support them. But I don't want to get off track here because in this church, you do a lot of ministering on spirits and on the way they act and the things that they're up to. But I was not prepared to go back into that city and I, my mind could not imagine how far inland that water had come. I could not believe that they could talk about a flood in that way. A tsunami, yes, but I could not believe that anybody could say that these people were just washed out. Because without understanding, literally, the people that survived that must have been solid Christians must have been prayed up, must have had the hand of God on them to survive that water. And even by innocence, as we could not even minister to those people that were returning, because you could see in their face as some of them came back just to visit the area and see the churches, many people are not going back and not coming back and understand that we saw. When we were not ministering, we just decided we would walk around downtown. We had been there, when we'd been there before, there's a place that you may be familiar with where Mardi Gras takes place there. It's called the French Quarter. And I was very curious about this place. I had heard that it was not touched, but I couldn't believe it when I seen how far in that water had come geographically. And I want you to try and envision this. There's a wide street, and the name escapes me, as it did this morning. Before you go into the French Quarter, and on that side of the street, a seven or eight story building was washed out and go across the street, the size of Atlantic Boulevard, perhaps just a little bit more, and that side, the French Quarter, was not touched. Was not touched. And as I stood in the middle of that road, and thank God I had witnesses with me, my husband being one, and other ministers, people of God, who understand about deliverance and spiritual warfare, I said, my God, how could that building there, what stopped the water here? What stopped the water dead there? Could the building have stopped it? Well, perhaps if there was a line of buildings all the same height or taller, it might have done. But I seen that the buildings were washed out. 
And we went into the French Quarter and we spoke to some of the shopkeepers. And they said, well, how come you're able to carry on business here? Do you know, just across the road there, they're washed out. And I said, yeah, we got just a little bit of water around the edges, but we're fine in here. My art gallery is fine. My stores are fine. My voodoo shops, naked women in the windows were fine. They think. They think. As we ministered to the people, we were unable to speak. All we could do was listen. Truly, God is a God of miracles because the people that survived that thing, as they tried to describe to us what it was like, I couldn't even get my brain around it. There was an elderly lady, and I give this testimony in this church before, who had not been out of her bed for many, many years, and she was a very large, large, large lady and could not walk any longer. And when she did in her own house, in her little home, she had her four-prong walking stick. And she that was very small, perhaps not even the width of this church. She could get to her kitchen or somebody in the church. In fact, the church used to come to her to pray for her. She didn't go around anymore. You see, I see the hand of God. And I can't get over the hand of God. Because she said, Pastor, I lay on this bed. These are tears of joy, not of sadness. Because she said, I lay on this bed. I put a clean nightdress on. And I got ready to die. I got ready to die. Because I could hear the confusion outside in my little house. And when I seen that water hit that door, and that door come in, I said, Jesus. And I couldn't even think to pray at that moment. I said, Jesus. And the water hit my bed. And it lifted me off the bed. Flat flat on my back. It lifted me off of that bed. And as that water rose me up towards my ceiling, I said, Jesus! And I still had a hold of my stick, and I turned it over. And she said, I hit that roof. And that roof cave did. That roof cave did. And it took me into the attic, and I could see that old roof above. I could see the daylight through that roof. And she said, in presence of mine on my back, I still had my cane and I hit it again. And those boards gave. And that water rose me through that roof. Now, I don't know about you. I'm not a young woman, but I'm not an old woman. And I've seen some of those young people laying in that flat on the television, not in person. But I know the hand of God was on that woman. And every time she cried his name out, he delivered her. And he took her through that roof. And she was on top of her house. I don't know, can you imagine? Nobody should have to ever ask you to pray. But I wish maybe some of you could have been with me in those streets as we walked around there. As we ask the people, what do you need? What do I need? I need socks. I need pants. My Bible washed away. I don't have nothing. I need underwear. I need everything. I need a life. I need my mother back. I need my grandmother who couldn't swim. Listen, this was not water. This was vile, filthy feces. Everything imaginable. Grease, oil, and filth, filth was in that place. The devil's mire was around the people of God in that place. And this lady said, I remembered I could swim when I was a girl. I couldn't move my legs, but I flapped my arms and I seen a tree. I seen a tree and I headed for that tree. And I flapped my arms every which way and 
God moved me. I said, Jesus. And I went to that tree. There was people in this church that witnessed. They had seen this lady on the television. Tied. Who said that? Was it you, Pat? You saw her. She said, I took my nightdress off and I tied it on the front and I got it buttoned, tied around that tree. And I stayed there in that filth of that water. And I still didn't die. She said, I can't come back to this place. I can't come back here. I'm not scared because I know God spared me. I know nobody, but God got me through that because I was prepared to die. But if I'm here to let you know that it is time to pray, time to believe in God, I'm here as a witness of the most horrible thing that could happen in America to people. I'm alive. I could not walk. I will not ever lay down on my back again. I will not trust my life to any government. I will not trust anything to anybody else but God because nobody but God saved me. Now, Pastor Pat will stand here and she will compel you. Please pray. Come to church. Support the church. Pay your tithes. Help us out, please. Praise and worship God. Is it going to take a tsunami? Can you not imagine your family washed away? Can you not imagine your goods and your rights? Yes, we have problems. Why would a church have to beg anybody? They seen God. The old people died. They died because they couldn't start over. They Some of them survived. But the ladies told us. My grandmother just said, I can't start over. My grandpa just sat down in a chair and died. Why would anybody have to beg you, listen to the deliverance, Pastor? Why would anybody have to beg you to do anything for a church? What could we do? If we don't come together and we don't reach out for one another and we don't support the church that God has sent us to, God help mercy on your soul. If anybody has trouble getting out of bed on Sunday morning or disciplining their children because the Bible asks us to and you call yourself a Christian, God have mercy on your soul. But most of all, if you don't believe what Pastor Pat is reading to you, that God can deliver you from whatever it is that you have going on, that old people and young people could survive a flood like that is beyond our understanding. Thank you for hearing my testimony. God bless you all. Now, the atheist that I talked about that wrote me the email, she told me, she says, you know, I'm writing you this. I'm an atheist. She said, but I watched all of that that was going on over there in New Orleans. And she said, my heart went out to the people. And she said, I just ached. I saw those people dying. I saw them uh, without homes. I saw the whole thing. And I cried for them. And she said, and then I saw these Christians coming and saying, God was purifying the land. Now, that's not a Christian that would stand up there and say, God is purifying the land. 
and be excited because their words that they spoke, their curses that they have placed on the land seem to be coming true. God have mercy. And so I wrote, whenever Katrina came to New Orleans, as you just heard a witness say, Pastor Annette and her husband, they said that they went and the water went right midway the road that goes right into Sin City there, and that all of that paraphernalia for the Mardi Gras was safe. All of the floats, the Dubais, everything that they have was saved. The mayor that left the buses sitting there while people were struggling to get free to live, left them sitting there, let the people walk over to the saints' uh, uh, coliseum, go into that place. The, uh, the bathrooms were not functioning. There was no water there for them. They were there for uh, days and days and days, packed up on top of each other. There were even some murders that happened in that place while they were kept there. People standing on top of a bridge that couldn't get into the Colosseum, people sitting on top of their houses that were not, rescu- were not able to be rescued. The levees broke. Some say that they, they were exploded, by the way. There's evidence that somebody exploded those levees. The, the, the whole city was like a bowl of boiling cauldron of witchcraft. But God is cleansing the land. God is not cleansing the land. This is the devil. This is the work of the devil. And we as Christians, we can do our part. We can pray. We can pray for our city as well as their city, as well as West Palm Beach. Yes, it's a West Palm. I mean, Key West is filled with homosexuals. I've been down there. They've practically taken over the whole area. But God will judge them at the judgment seat. He's not in the business of tearing up nations and cities as his judgment. His time of judgment has not come yet. But you've got an ignorant people running around thinking that they're Moses, striking land, striking churches, pronouncing curses on humans, places, things. These prophets, they went up to New York, struck the Statue of Liberty, New York has already been struck. 9-11. If New York was going to repent, 9-11, they would have repent. Why does God have to have two dopes to go up there and strike the Statue of Liberty again? It didn't work the first time now, did it? I, 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 I'm so distressed over this because I know the church is sleeping. And the church, and I'm not talking about our church here, but I know Christians are sound asleep as far as spiritual activity and the winds of change that you're hearing them talk about concerning the uh, false prophets are calling forth the winds of change. Barack Obama is calling the winds of change. You know we need change, but we don't need the kind of change that these people have in mind. Barack Obama just had this big uh, festival to accept the nomination as President of the United States. And I, I, I you know, I, I've worked with black people all of my life. I've been to Africa many times. This is no 
nothing about that black and white here. Because Hillary wasn't much better in her faith. But Barack Obama, if you, if you knew about portals and magical talking and magical thinking that a witch or a wizard does to bring about things to happen, to blind our eyes so that we can actually see what's going on. A rock Obama, they built him a portal right down there in front of that, um, that group of people, 80,000 people. God bless that 80,000 people came. They came looking for something. But they might find something that they didn't know they were looking for. The change that they might have found might not exactly be the change that they had in mind. Because the change was this. In that portal, a portal, remember, is a, is a, a, a wormhole. It, it looks like a circle. And they built a, a, a Greek temple there for him to, receive, to, to say thank you for the nomination. At the podium where he stood, they had a circle around that podium. And that circle had stars all around it, witchcraft stars. In witchcraft, a circle, when a, when a wizard is performing a ritualism in Africa, they stand in the circle. And they're safe as long as they perform the ritualism within the circle. After they uh, perform that, the demons are all on the outside of that circle. And the demons try to capture the first person that steps outside of the circle. They try to capture that person for a sacrifice. You see, in Africa, they know the reality of spiritual things. When I go to minister over in Africa, some of the holiest, most sanctified people, purest people that I personally have ever met in my entire life, live there, Christians, real Christians. Christians, some of them, that have come out of the uh, paganism, idolatry, witchcraft. And when they come to the Lord, they just see the reality spiritually and supernaturally that Jesus Christ is real and that Jesus Christ is Lord and that they connect immediately to His Spirit. And he becomes a reality to them. Some of them have to walk for hours to get to the church. Bishop Kenko told me that they will walk to his church barefooted for hours. They get to the church about a block away from the church. They put their shoes on because they don't have money to buy new shoes. And then they go into the church. Now, when you go into Bishop Kenko's church, they are praising the Lord. I, I tell you, you feel like you're just lifted right off of this earth up into the kingdom of God. It's so wonderful. At the same time, the witches come right into the church for the purpose of defeating God's people. They come to challenge his power, his wife's power, and all of those 48 ministers that he has there in the church. And when they come, and I was there many times, preached there many times, when the anointing of God comes on the word, demons begin to manifest in the congregation Witches, wizards. His workers are trained to go out into the congregation and just take the people and put them up in the front, put them right in the front of the church, 
and they cast those devils out of them. I have films of this. But they cleaned the fish. And when the fish are cleaned, then they, they commit to the church and they come back. And they, they work in the church. They support the church. They're happy to be on this side. He has a big church. He has three tiers now. He had one little tier when I was over there. has a big church. People come from all around. They, his wife has established 800 churches over in Africa. A zeal for Jesus. Hot for the Lord. Wanting to do something for Christ. Because Jesus did so much for them. And you know... You come to America, and it's a ho-hum religion over here. you got people in this building that stand before you that have dedicated their lives to Christ. I've been in the ministry 33 years. Annette and her husband have been around many years. Dedicated to Christ. Know the Word, know the Lord, know the Gospel. Love the people. And we have to pray for people to come to church in this building. What a disgrace. We have to even pray for, pray for people that are in these churches that have received touches of God to come to church. America, you're in a backslidden condition. And I tell you, just like she said, we need to jump up. It's church time. I'm going. I'm going to go and praise the Lord. Sell out while you still have time. Jesus is real. And you see all of these hurricanes, these fires, these earthquakes, these winds, these tornadoes, these cyclones, all of this stuff that you see going on was prophesied in the Word of God. You do not need some crazy man that is living with a woman that is not his wife, going around thinking he's a prophet of God, pronouncing curses on our land. We do not need that. But the body of Christ got to start praying and taking the Word of God seriously. Bible says that when these things come, he said, peerless days will come. He said, look up, for your redemption groweth nigh. We're not supposed to be downhearted and fearful about all of this turmoil going on. But we have to see it like it is. And we have to see our Christian brothers and sisters right in the midst of the storm. Some of them went right through the storm as my sister met over in New Orleans. But I also want you to know that the devil, his people, got through. Within six months, Mardi Gras went to business again. Six months. The mayor that left the buses parked while people perished. That walked around in an absolute state of confusion. Got reelected. The first thing on their agenda out there was let's go create some uh, uh, casinos. People's houses were confiscated by the government. I saw a film on CNN where the, the uh, uh, government was going into the houses and getting the weapons out of the houses and things out of the houses. And uh, they were making the rich people leave their houses. And they got it on film. So if the rich people sitting in these mansions think they're safe, they're just as in much of trouble as we are. 
I mean, the devil doesn't care if you have money. He doesn't care if you serve him. Your soul already belongs to him. And he can kill you anytime he wants to. So these storms that are, are, are being released, it's been prophesied seven storms to come. Seven to a witch or a wizard means the work is completed. That's what that means. So they prophesied seven storms. And we break the number of hurricanes to be released in the name of Jesus. And we bind up those hurricanes. And I want you to get to your feet and come and get some more oil. Walk around and anoint these pews and anoint the doors and pray with me. <coughs> Believing for God to take authority over that hurricane. To stop it in Jesus' name. The people will flow into these two ministries and support us while they still can. Pray. Anoint the pews. Walk around. The ones that are not here, pray for them. God desires that none perish. And you see, the truth of it is, is some perish. Some are perishing that used to, just within months, used to sit right here in this church. And that's a shame and a crime. And it's not because this church is at fault. It's because of commitment. It's because you've got to sell out to make it on through. And if you're the dumbest sheep in the kingdom of God, and you don't know one word, if you know the name of Jesus and you love Jesus, he's going to bring you through, isn't he? He's going to bring you through. You are his child. And he's called you here for this purpose and for such a time as this. Father God, we bind the powers of darkness over the weather. We bind all the machines that are working to cause these weather disasters all over this land. We bind the computer equipment. We ask the fire of the Holy Ghost to go and bind, uh, burn the equipment up in the name of Jesus. Confuse those that are working on those projects in terms of, of coming up with new ways to kill people in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that every witch and wizard that has had any part in releasing this, this, these disasters in California across this nation, that, Lord, that you will take them in your hand. And we put them there for your judgment. We ask you to judge the evil people that are, are bringing down the powers of hell on our land. All of the portal openers, all of the ones that are snatching and stealing souls in our nation and in the world. We bind up the powers of darkness that have come to rob, kill, and steal. We bind up the, the, the devils that want to take the oil rigs out there in the Gulf of Mexico and destroy them so that we can't have our cars, so that we'll have to pay $10 a gallon for a gas. We ask you to have angels hovering over every oil rig and every refinement place out there in the name of Jesus, and that you will send that storm uh, that... It will go where there's no people, in areas where no people live even. And Father God, in the name of Jesus, we protect the people's places there in New, or New Orleans that have had to get on those buses today. And there's one prophet uh, or a person on, tele on t Internet that says, if a disaster comes, whatever you do, don't get on the bus and the train when the government puts you on there because you might not ever come back. So I'm telling you, these are peerless days, peerless days, peerless days. And we pray for these people that have had to leave their homes. And we put them in your hands and we ask you to guide them and guard them and help them. And the old people, like that old lady 
that was laying flat on her back and couldn't call anybody to come and help her. But she called on Jesus and you showed up. We're asking you to show up for us today and prove to the world that Jesus Christ is God. And as those programs go out on ZEP and all over the world, and they were all over the world yesterday concerning Pat Holiday and threats on my life, we ask that you guard my life, that you send as many of your warring angels to protect my life, my church, the people connected to us, my relatives, my family, my children, my great-grandchildren, my grandson, all of the people connected that are married into my family, and every single person that stands with us in this church, that you will hear our prayers today, and it shall be done. And every power that's been released against this church and against me and against uh, every single person in this church, we say that you have to return to wherever you came from. Every devil has to leave. You have no power. You have no authority. And in the name of Jesus, we rise up today and we take authority over that demon in that storm called uh, Gustav. And we say that that demon God is bound. Its power is bound. Its intentions are bound. Every pathway that it thinks it wants to go, we command it to break up. We command the clouds to break up, the rain to dry up. And as Jesus spoke out there in the sea, when the raging storms came, He said, Peace be still. And we say, Peace be still. We're coming after you with the blood of Jesus. We surround that water with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus on that water, Lord, that it travels on. The blood of Jesus around all of the territories that it has been programmed to hit. We ask that you, Lord, will send your warring angels and link all around Florida and all around Mississippi and Louisiana and all around Texas, God and all of the territories that it's been, and then break it up, God. Break it up, God. Break the back of that devil. In the name of Jesus, we command that devil right now to stop its power. We bind all reinforcing devils, and in the name of Jesus, we forbid, we forbid Hannah to join with Falstaff. You, they said that Hannah was called the, uh, the uh, God is gracious. And today we're calling on our God because he's full of grace. And in the name of Jesus, every single person may well deserve to die down in Key West and out there in sinful uh, New Orleans. They may deserve to die for their sin life. But that's why Jesus came. And instead of praying for their death, we pray for their souls. And we ask for a harvest of souls, God. We ask for Christians to begin to pray for souls, God. We ask for workers to go and get souls, God. And in the name of Jesus, we release souls. We release love. We release care. We release finances. We release everything that they need out there in the name of Jesus. And Father God, I ask that you strengthen this church and that you will strengthen Brother David, David and Sister Annette's church and the work that you put them here for. You called them. They didn't call themselves from Canada. Lord, they sold their house and were obedient. And they've been obedient, staying in this church praying and interceding, not only for our work, but for this city. And Father God, it's time for you to release, hallelujah, your blessings over them. We thank you for the nice van you gave them. We thank you for the chairs that you gave them. We thank you for the finances that you've given them. 
We thank you for the open doors to go and minister that you've done. We thank you for the television program that you've given them. We praise you for the internet that you've given them. We give you glory, God, that we want to see fruit in that ministry of people, of givers, of people coming hungrily to be released, delivered, healed, of people coming, God, in the name of Jesus to support and work in that ministry. And we thank you for those same things for this ministry. We thank you for those faithful people that have stood and the new people that you brought and the ones, the God, that are in a state of confusion. We take authority over the spirit of confusion in their minds right now. And every devil of witchcraft and wizardry that have been sent against the people that come into this building, whether it's in Annette, uh, Pastor Annette and Pastor David's church or this church, we bind the powers of the wizards right now and the witches. And every intention, every prayer that you've made for members of our families, we break the powers Every planting that you put on the grounds, we ask God to send angels and dig them up and go plant them back to you. In the name of Jesus, we command the striking of the foundation of this building, the foundation of every church in this state and all across these states that they have caused to destroy the pastors the pastor's minds, the pastor's faith, the pastor's families, the whole entire state, we break the words that they spoke in the name of Jesus. We command those words to return to wherever they came from. And we forbid them to be able to have any effect over the state of Florida, California, Mississippi, Louisiana, all of the states in this nation. New York City, Washington, they just recently went and struck Washington and buildings up there. They are calling forth nuke bombs to hit our country. We bind those words up in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we put supernatural tape on the mouths of those demons that serve them. And Father, I forbid those devils to serve them anymore, ever again, in the name of Jesus. And I forbid any reinforcing devils to come and serve them, in the name of Jesus. And just like you put Bentley to bed, we say that you will put them to bed, that you will take away any kind of idea in their mind that they have power, in Jesus' name. We plead the blood of our city today. We pray for these uh, churches that have gotten involved in this Lakeland mess and the pastors blindly following the devil. We pray for these churches that are going to have this nightclub atmosphere set up in their churches with flashing lights and young people in, in, in their dancing like they're in a nightclub. God, we ask, God, we ask that you take a hold of these pastors and Lord, that you will shake them and the ones that will listen to you, that you will bring them out. But God, these other, we ask that you protect your sheep in the name of Jesus. Protect those young people, God, particularly. I mean, there are churches, God, in the state of Florida that have tattooers and piercers in their church to pierce the young people and tattoo them. My God, have we fallen. But God, we ask that you keep us straight up walking before your throne in grace with power, commitment, and tuck the word of God that we take every day that we come to this church. Tuck it into our hearts. We pray for those that were not able to come to church today. Brother Jefferson, we ask for an absolute miracle in his life. You said that you were going to give him a miracle. You have given him part of the miracle. But we say that you're not a part-time God. And in the name of Jesus, 
We release miracles. We release miracles in their family. In Jesus' name. We thank you. We thank you. We pray for Pastor Dennis and his wife as they return from their son's graduation. And as they fly, we ask for your divine protection to be on the plane and that you will give them uh, first-class seats on the plane, that when they walk through the airport, that the people see kings and a queen walking with them, and that they will just go right through. They won't have to stand in long lines. And we give you praise in the name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. I, I was going to teach, but it, but but you know the Lord just changed the order of the business today, like He does usually. So, uh, I, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures to to empower you. Uh, Exodus 15:11 says, "Who is like unto Thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like Thee?" Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. Thou stretchest out thy right hand, the earth swallow them. So this scripture, it's not a God that send in disasters now, is it? This is a God that is glorious. This is a God that's doing wonders, storms and hurricanes and fires and destruction, is the hand of the devil. Amen? Uh, and it says that, Thou stretchest out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. And we ask you, God, to stretch forth your right hand and swallow up these devils that are threatening our nation. And we'll give you the praise and the glory. In First Chronicles 29.12, it says, Both riches and honor come of thee. Now, you're seeking riches and honor. There's nothing wrong with that. God gives it to you. Amen? But hallelujah, we can ask him for it. If we ask with the right heart and for the right reasons. We're not asking him for riches for us. We're asking him for riches for the tent ministry that they want to get off the ground. Amen? We're asking him for a new building for Miracle Outreach Ministry. We're asking him for people to come to church and finances to help the people and to fuel the work. There's nothing wrong with riches. Riches, there's something wrong with them. But riches, uh, if you're using them for the glory of God. Amen? And so... Uh, it says here, and in thy hand, in God's hand, power and might in thine hand, it is to make great and to give strength unto all. Does that sound like God has called men to take a, a, a magical staff and walk around the country striking churches' foundations? Hello? It, it, does that sound like God uh, striking pastors even when they're in error to kill them? I don't think so. You see, they're in error. But you know, God might reach out and turn some of them. Some of them are going to repent. Some of them are going to be powerful end-time ministers because of the darkness that they fell in. We're not to judge. We're just to pray. Amen? We're to judge their doctrines. To warn people, don't follow. That is not the doctrine that's in the Bible. Jesus is not in the center of that movement. There's nothing wrong with that. But, but to judge the sin of the person, let God judge that. He knows how to judge people. He judged me. Didn't he judge you? Amen. Psalm 62, 11, God's spoken once, twice. I have heard this, that power belongeth to God. And God, today we ask that you show out big, 
that you show these people your power, demonstrate it miraculously. We do not know how you're going to do it, but our trust is in our God. Amen? In Matthew 19, 26, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God, say it with me, all things are possible. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go ahead and shout. Hallelujah. We're shouting that storm down, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The name that's above every name. The name that every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I tell you, he's Lord over those hurricanes. He's Lord over those waters. And we ask him to cool the waters with a giant ice cube and put his blood all over those waters. If those demons want to go over those waters, they're going to have to travel on the blood of Jesus because we are spreading the blood of Jesus on those waters. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1.19 And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to who? Say it loud. Who is us for? It's you. Amen. It's me. It's God's church. And we're rising up today. And we're taking dominion over the powers of the enemy. And we're putting him at bay. And we're commanding him to stop his wicked works. And particularly in the name of God. Amen. His power to us for who? What? What do we believe? I didn't hear that. Amen. According to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he what? Say it loud. The devils hate that one. He raised him from the dead. And did what? In heavenly places. So what do we serve? We serve a God of life, not death. Amen? And Lord, we give you glory and praise. And we ask that every single person that has participated in this warfare this day, sitting in heavenly places with you, that as we leave this building, that we'll walk, hallelujah, with you all week. And that your divine protection is not only upon us, but upon our brothers and sisters in New Orleans, in Key West, and on the believer and the unbeliever. These people said that God is coming to destroy the righteous with the unrighteous. (coughs) The Bible never teaches that. So in the name of Jesus, we call a harvest in from Key West, from New Orleans, from uh, Houston, Texas, Brownsville, from all of these uh, Mississippi towns. From Oh, and we particularly ask for your divine protection over Pensacola because uh, the, the ministry over in Pensacola, uh, David Eels and his group, are the ones that uncovered the prophets of doom And so they have cursed them for death, too. So in the name of Jesus, we cover them with the blood of Jesus, their work, their people with the blood, their cities with the blood. We plead the blood of Jesus. We ask that you link angels all around the coastline. And we forbid, hallelujah, the devil to harm one hair on their heads, too, in Jesus' name. And everybody stand to your feet and let's praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the King. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for victory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're excited about you today, God. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We feel your anointing upon us. We praise you, Lord. We give you glory, 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 glory. Praise the King. Praise the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the King. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This is like old time Pentecost, right? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We bind every devil in this place and command them to get out of bodies and leave, to get out of this room, to go to the pit, never to return. We plead the blood over our grounds. We put linking angels around our churches, around our homes. We put linking angels around our children, grown or small, our great-grandchildren, our great our grandchild, all of them, in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Now, you want to come and take?